a blessed day to you all my sports to the bone people thank you all for tuning in appreciate the love and support all right so a couple of stories to look at in this one now we see where former west in this space uh, currently ambrose he is saying that listen West Indies, they have the talent and they have what it takes to go ahead and win this T20 World Cup. He had a couple more interesting things to say about the team. So I am going to be giving you some info on that. Plus, you know, why I tell you, Nicholas Puran, I am hoping my viewers and subscribers that this form will roll over into the T20 World Cup. Once again, yesterday, he was unstoppable. Man got um, 70 odd runs off, 20 odd deliveries. Gonna give you the exact details of that. You know, he led um, LSG to victory over Mumbai Indians. Uh, Romario Shepard was also involved in that game. So we will give you his stats also. And we're gonna finish up by looking at some track and field. Uh, we see where a uh, Jamaican who is living in Canada, very good hurdler, who is looking to represent Canada in the upcoming um, Olympics, you know, he, along with his family, they are set to be deported from Canada next week. Um, the lawyer, they have lawyers on the case and stuff, but the deportation order has been sent and they are set to leave Canada. You know, I'm going to give you the details. Why is it that he and his family had to leave Jamaica to go to Canada and, um, you know, take a look at some more stuff. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you have not yet subscribed. Also, let me know what you think in the comment section. All right, so the first bit of information here on Sir Kirtley Ambrose, taking it from the ESPN Creek Info website, right? And Ambrose was speaking, my people, and he was basically saying that, listen, this West Indies, um, this crop of West Indies uh, T20 players, they have what it takes to go on and lift a third T20 title. Yes, I third T20 World Cup title and you know he's saying that these guys just need to play um, good consistent cricket and they should be okay so uh, I'm just going to go through the, the article here and give you Sir Kirtley Ambrose um, quotes or uh, what he said so this is the first one and I quote we have a very very good team as we speak they that's the West Indies players are in Antigua at a camp preparing themselves for the start of the T20 World Cup, which is a couple of weeks away, in code for now. I tell my people, usually when we're going into a T20 World Cup, you know, we hear a lot of things, um, a lot of outside noise, people saying this, people saying that. But one thing I will I will say, you know, I will put this to you that um, I think it's the first World Cup since I am understanding cricket that they have heard so many positive things are so much positive things coming from former players. You understand quite a few former players. Usually, when it comes on to T20, going into T20 World Cup, they usually, uh, people, you, we, we say, yeah, man, the West Indies team is expected to do well. You know, but now it seems, going into this one, it seems as if a lot of people, um, former players, you know, they are confident. We hear people like Laura, people like Kurt Lambers now, and um, a couple of other people. So this is Ambrose again, and I quote, I believe once the guys start playing consistent cricket and smart cricket, I believe we can take the trophy. It, um, it is not going to be easy, but we are one of only two nations to have won it twice. So we are going to try and make it three. He went on to say, and no other nation has ever won it at, at, on home soil. So all that is motivation for the guys to do well, and I am hoping they can do it. End quote for now. Right, so some good um, positive words there from the great man, you know, reminding the players that, listen, if you are able to go and take and, and take the trophy on home soil, you would be the first um, nation to do so, the first team to do so. So, you know, I, I, am, I am definitely hoping that the players will be able to get it together and um, go out there and, and, and secure that, that title, right? Uh, so this is Sir Kirtley Ambrose again. It is not going to be easy because T20 cricket, every team has an equal chance of beating any other team. And that is just the nature of T20 cricket. 
it um it is going to be exciting but i am going to be rooting for west indies end quote what you mean we're rooting for our, our um our home country or our or our home team yes i always say to people you know sometimes um the players that we want to make it in they, they don't get in but at the end of the day when the squad is selected and you know they put i live now they don't have to just work with it man and make sure so we, we, we show we support behind the, the, the guys um, so I am in total agreement with um, Sir Kirtley Ambrose here. Now, talking about going out there and winning and securing the trophy, one player that will be crucial to that is Nicholas Puran. And boy, I tell you, I am hoping that the, the IPL form will roll over into the World Cup. Right? Once again, he was at his brilliant best. That was yesterday as his team, the LSG, they were able to beat the Mumbai Indians by 18 runs, right? Um, the Super Giants, um, that's LSJ Puran's team, they batted first, scored 214 for six from their 20 overs, right? We saw wicketkeeper batsman Kale Rahul made 55 from 41. And um, he was uh, there with Puran and both men, they, they, really, they really put in some good work, my people. Uh, Puran made 75 of 29. Yes, 75 from 29 deliveries, 5 fours and 8 sixes. That's a strike rate of 258.6. And I spoke about this strike rate thing a couple of days ago in a video. You know, I have always said that strike rate is important in T20 cricket. Yes, but you know, especially when you're a top middle order batsman, continued or continuous good strike rate if you can put it like that um in an innings is is what we are looking for not looking for my number three four five batsman to come down and hit two six and or two sixes and get out you understand i'm looking for him to bat at least 30 35 deliveries if it is available and that is an an an, an strike well over 170 180 and poor and 75 from 29 five fours and eight sixes well over 250 that is that is very very good um there my people now um our all around Romaro shepherd he bowled two overs cost him 30 runs right two overs for 30 runs and i am mostly highlight i am really highlighting our players here um when it was time for mumbai indians to bat you know they kept in Roy sharma made 68 um he led the way there uh Romaro shepherd was left not out and one having faced one delivery so he didn't get an opportunity to really um, see if he could uh, bring his team across the line. So that is pretty much um, how that one went in terms of our players, right? Uh, let's finish up with some track and field, my people. So taking this one from the Sportsmax website. And the headline says, Olim Olympic hopeful Tamari Lindo faces deportation to Jamaica amidst, um, amidst Olympic dream. Our Olympic dreams and this is a big story that it has been making the rounds um, since yesterday right and it's a case where a family had to run away leave Jamaica and seek asylum in Canada because according to what they are saying their family you know was in danger because of political um, you know violence and all of them sort of thing um, but Tamari who is the one that is trying to keep his family there um you know he's an athlete uh he attends york university there in canada and he's actually one of the better um her uh flat hurdlers in the in the in the country you understand he actually just won a bronze medal in the 60 meter hurdles you know representing uh york university in the collegiate championship so he's a very good athlete my people very very good athlete so let me just give you a little um info here on what they are saying about the family so it says tamari's journey to canada began in 2019 when he and his family fled jamaica due to alleged uh threats of violence linked to his father that's george lindo's um political activism against gang influence in support of um the opposition party right mixed politics thing my people all right so you know um he actually went uh, along with the rest of his family you know um immediate family over there earned a scholarship got into a school and you know um 
got a scholarship, you know, started in, in high school, um, was scouted and, um, well, he, he was in high school, was scouted and then got a scholarship uh, to, to attend York University. You understand? And now it seems as if everything's co um, everything is, is going to come crumbling down. So this is Tamari and I quote, my goal was to make the 2024 Paris Olympics, but now it feels like everything is being taken away, end quote. Right. Um, based on what we are hearing, you know, uh, they, 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 they have actually sent deport, the, deporting, the deportation order, which is supposed to take effect next week. So, you know, um, that is very, very tough on them. Uh, they're, the, the, the lawyers that is representing them is saying that um, it's a problem because, you know, they are afraid to go back to Jamaica because of political unrest and, 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 and gangs and all of them sort of things. Um, I know of the, the last name, but I, I personally don't know anything about them. You understand and why they had to leave Jamaica. But, uh, you know, we bring this story because it, it's, an, uh, it's an athlete. And, you know, whenever athlete, whatever situation an athlete is in, this is a sports platform, you know, we like to shed, shed a little light on it. Um, at the end of the day, you know, life is always important. So, you know, we wish them all the best. Hopefully things uh, work out for them um, for the best. So, yeah, pretty much it that my people. We're going to leave it right here so for now, you know. Big up on yourself and stay safe.